Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Democracy and Development, confronting a central ethical dilemma of international development with lessons from Rwanda and the Gambia. In this video, we're going to be looking at colonialist objections and responses to Wahale development. If you haven't checked out the previous videos in this series, it is highly recommended that you do so. We're going to be talking about specifically the Wahale method of development, so definitely watch that video. Uh, each of these objections videos will kind of stand on their own. But if you haven't checked out that one and some of the ones that come before it, it's highly recommended that you do so. With that, let's take a look. So in the last video in this series, we looked at an objection from the isolationist who claimed that any development, even the education and relationship-focused Wahale development, was doomed to being immoral. In this video, we're going to look at two objections from very much the other direction, colonialism. Simply, these are objections to the claim that Wahale development does not do enough to be morally justifiable. By providing a minimum intervention, it allows for more harm to continue that it could stop. First, we'll look at the insufficiency objection, and then we'll look at the prerequisites objection. So the insufficiency objection from the colonialist standpoint claims that education alone is insufficient to remedy the wrongs of the world. If we enforced something like Nussbaum's list through military might, we could protect the most vulnerable. But through education alone, we may convince some people, but will never convince enough to fix all of the wrongs. This objection takes the view that if you have the ability to stop an atrocity, you should, regardless of the will of the people in the country or community, and that for all the good that education does, it cannot stop all of these atrocities, since there are always going to be people who stubbornly insist on being hateful. I agree that it's impossible to use education and participation to create a perfect world where no unjust laws are made and no one ever decides to do something harmful to another person. While I can hope that one day enough people will be educated for every country in the world to agree to pass some actually enforceable and agreed to set of basic rights and capabilities, there may be some parts of the world which never do. There may be some groups which never agree, despite being democratic and educated. My only response, then, is that even if this way is not perfect, no other way is better, both from a teleological perspective and an instrumental one. Enforcing rules by military might or even international pressure is ineffective at best and counterproductive at worst, as hopefully many of the examples shared here have shown, and that can be found throughout the history of colonialism. From the instrumentalist perspective, attempting to force people to follow rules their elected government does not support is less effective than letting those people choose the laws themselves. Even if those laws end up being somewhat problematic or immoral, people are actually going to follow those laws. By undermining the government, you undermine any and all laws that it could pass, including ones that might be beneficial. From the teleological perspective, attempting to enforce undemocratic laws puts the external agent in an ethical bind of whether to violate democracy or rights. Leaving that up to the people reaffirms their agency and responsibility in the process, and makes whatever they decide on more impactful. It's misleading to say that education is not the most effective option. Military might might appear to make short-term changes, but without education and democracy, no real development will take place. Another line of attack from the colonialists is that there are certain prerequisites to education and democracy which must be established. This argument might be drawn from something like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Basically, someone needs to have a roof over their head and food in their belly before they can start to worry about being educated or care about democracy. Or as a Gambian might put it, boto kensongo bukalono a Mandinka proverb meaning an empty bag cannot stand. In other words, someone that isn't fed can't do anything else. These colonialists might claim that we should first give food, medicine, and housing, and worry about education and democracy once the basic needs are taken care of. However, I would argue that when you are hungry or sick is exactly the time you need to learn about democracy. If international agencies will always solve the problems of the people, there's no need for the people to stand up and hold their governments accountable. If people are starving, they don't need to be fed and patronized. They need to be given the tools to enact systematic change to make it so they will not starve again tomorrow. By simply giving people food, we destroy their initiative to make change in their society. 
and create dependency on international aid. This dependency destroys their ability to walk away from aid, a central part of Wahale development. If, on the other hand, you set fire to their souls with stories of education and democracy and the possibilities that they could get to if they would simply hold their governments accountable to giving them good interventions and giving them interventions which will help them to prosper and help them to be able to feed themselves and close themselves and have good medicine, not only will they be independent, they will may be empowered to fix problems that left them hungry in the first place. In other words, we should combat the Mandinka proverb with the words of Terry Pratchett, perhaps taken out of context. Give a man a fire and he's warm for a day, but set fire to him and he's warm for the rest of his life. In tempting, as tempting as it is to argue that simply imposing rights on people is the best way to solve violations of human rights, as the history of colonialism has shown, this does not work. Education does. And while it may seem like we should feed the hungry and cure the sick, this absolves governments of responsibility and steals jobs from local farmers and doctors. Instead of helping and educating those on the ground to act themselves, this will will empower them instead of infantilize them. That was Colonialist Objections and Responses. There's one more video in this series coming up, Boko Haram Objections and Responses. Thank you for following along if you followed along with this whole series. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.